okay guys now let us talk about the polarizing microscopy we first talk about what is polarizing microscopy and why we why we call it polarizing microscopy what is the features of polarizing microscopy in what uh, advantages uh, polarizing microscopy are differing uh, than the normal conventional light microscope and uh, we will talk about the biorefringence which play the most important role in polarizing microscopy then we will come to the setup and mechanical apparatus of polarizing microscopy and then we will talk about the principle and its application so let us first talk about uh, the what is polarizing microscopy and why it is called the polarizing microscopy so in this picture what we can look uh, at this picture if you look uh, I want you to zoom into this part so let's look at this picture so as the name suggests polarizing microscopy this is a part of a light microscopy that means we are using light as the illuminating source of our sample okay so we are illuminating our sample our specimen with normal light but that light is not the general norm, general part of the light we are creating a polarized light we are using polarized light to illuminate our sample that's why it is called the polarizing microscope now what do we mean by uh, polarized light or polarizing light so now let's focus on this picture so in this picture what is denoted uh, the difference between a linearly polarized light and uh, non polarized light so what happens when you look at the light source for example take sun uh, so if you look at the sun or take any of this light source we can find this kind of thing so it is unpolarized in nature that means as we know light as a wave and light can also behave as particle so if we think light as a wave as a wave then we can find the light is constructed by two different types of waves one is the uh, longitudinal and one is the lateral so this uh, these two different waves are uh, one is called the electric uh, wave or electro uh, electric spectrum another which is uh, going 90 degree with this electric spectrum is called the magnetic wave so elect uh, so light is simply as we know is electromagnetic spectrum so it is made up with two different waves one uh, uh, one is electric wave another one is a magnetic wave uh, both are constructed uh, via 90 degree angle to each other so in this case what we look at so uh, le now let's forget the magnetic part let's talk about the electric vectors of light so electric vectors are oscillating uh, laterally uh, like that so if we draw a, a wave like that so electric vectors are oscillating up and down like this direction okay so if we think about a uh, light from a light source like sun or something bulb uh, light bulb or something like that but you can find the light uh, which is coming from the source is constructed by many different light beams which are constructing which has which are uh, uh, just moving the light vectors uh, or electric vectors are moving in all directions in this picture what we can see they are moving in all the direction here there there and all the direction they are moving so it is irrespective of direction they are moving so we call it the non polarized now where what we call a polarized is when we cut off all this different direction of electro electric spectrum and only select one type of electric spectrum that means one type of direction uh, in which uh, those electric uh, electric vectors are oscillating then we can make a polarized light we call it the linearly polarized light so in this picture what we can see a linearly polarized light so in this picture uh, from this non polarized light we cut all the other electric vectors which are oscillating in different vibrations like here there and like this we selecting only this middle part we are selecting this electric vector which are oscillating up and down like that we are cutting all those uh, electric vectors which are oscillating in other directions and finally we get this linearly polarized light so we can make a linearly polarized light from non polarized light by using uh, some uh, polarizer some element which cut all the other rays of other direction out only select one type of direction we call them the polarizer so this polarizer is a very very important constituent of this polarizing microscopy because the all, all of this thing is uh, just based on this polarizer but not only polarizer is important but also another thing is important to to look at this polarization of the microscope this is called the analyzer this helps us to analyze the spectrum this helps us to analyze the image that we can look through okay that's why these two components along with the polarizer 
this analyzer will help us to understand what polarizing microscopy is and they are very very important part mechanical part of this polarizing microscopy all the other things are, uh, are basically common to this polarizing microscopy except for this analyzer and polarizer okay and another thing I must tell in, in case of this polarizing microscopy that normally the polarizing microscopy is done in case of a special special type of sample. So it's a special type of sample. So why? Let us look at this. Okay. We have talked about the polarization part. Now let's talk about the sample part. Because this is one type of microscopy in which the sample is little bit different than the conventional sample we use in our general light microscopy, light compound microscopy. We prepare our sample, we place it, we fix it in the slide, we stain it, then you look at it. But in this case of polarizing microscopy, the sample preparation is different. Not only the sample preparation is different, but also the sample type uh, which we can use is different. Okay, in this case, we have to use birefringent sample or birefringent specimen. What do we mean by this birefringent specimen? Now let us look at here. Okay, now so, uh, in in uh, in very simple words, the specimen which is um, which which normally has crystal, a structure like crystals, which is a very very thick medium, which is a viscous layer, which is not made up with. Uh, one type of substance so it is made up with an isotropic substances normally what we know if you look at the glass or something like that plain glass or all these things they are made up with isotropic substances the the density of uh, the, those things are similar in all the places but if we have some sample in which uh, we can have different densities in different regions and that is made up with different uh, different kinds of different types of medium different types of uh, materials uh, that gives rise to the anisotropy of the substance then we call those substances birefringent specimen or birefringent substance okay for example a sand dust for example NaCl crystal and this type of things uh, are varied uh, the, the density are varied throughout the specimen so if we take the crystal uh, out then we can find the density here is different from density here and that's the, that's and uh, and the uh, and this part is made up with mostly silica. This part is made up with mostly other thing. So that's why this part, this type of materials are called anisotropic material, and that anisotropic materials are the exact specimen for polarizing microscopy. Okay, uh, we can also see a thin section of cell or tissue. Uh, better we can uh, look at the tissue via this process, but still it is mostly used for looking at this birefringent specimen. Okay, now let's talk about another important phenomena of birefringence. So, what do we mean by birefringence? Now, I want you to focus on this picture. Uh, I am uh, <laughs> just accommodating all the pictures in one slide. So, in this picture, what we can look at something here. So, just forget about this polarizer and analyzer thing. Just look at uh, the basic phenomena. And what is if uh, something is coming? So, a light beam is coming from here. So we add a polarizer. Why we are adding a polarizer? Because polarizer will cut off the vibrations in all the other direction. It will select only one uh, directional vibration of an electric vector uh, for light. Light, okay. And it will uh, allow this vibration, and it will enter into this object. So we have this object. The object is a birefringent object. That means uh, they are having the, uh, the anisotropy of this object. They are having different densities in different regions. So when it passes through this object what happens this light beam is mm, broken down it is it has been constructed in two different light beams so this one light beam is broken down into two different light beams what we can see when it passes through this type of specimen okay not only uh, the type we have seen before but it's creating the light beam one with another in 90 degree angle in 90 degree angle so now I want you to focus on this schematic diagram. So let's look. This is a, a normal construction. So when it passes, a polarized light is coming through this place. And whenever it is encountering the crystal, whenever it is encountering any of this birefringent specimen, any of this dense or different crystal-like specimen, it will, uh, it will divide this light beam into two parts uh, in different way oscillating parts, both 90 uh, put 90 degree angle with each other one is the electric spectrum another one is the magnetic spectrum this is the magnetic one this is the electric one in two different spectrums and these two spectrums will come uh, to our eye 
so this type of objects are called the birefringent objects and the ability the capability of these objects to uh, to uh, bend this like to this to form construct uh, these two types of electric beam uh, electric and magnetic beams uh, from this one type of polarized light is called the birefringence so this phenomenon is called the birefringence okay so this birefringence is really very important in case of this polarizing microscopy Now, uh, now we have uh, talked about this uh, polarizing uh, nature of the light, and as well as the birefringence, and we have talked about the birefringence sample or birefringence specimen. Uh, now let us look how this birefringence come to play with the polarizing microscopy. So this birefringence, uh, what we know that uh, if we cut out all the different vibrations in pass through only one type of vibrating light, then it will be divided div into two different waves. One is the electric wave, another one is the magnetic wave. Both are placed in the 90 degree angle. Now this light will come. So let's look at uh, the plane structure of this polarizing effect here. Okay. Uh, here now look at the structure or uh, construction of the polarizing microscope. So here is the light source. So this is the light source from the we, we just talked about the light source uh, the light path only. So the light source is coming. So light is coming from the light source. It will passes through the polarizer. It's polarizer is simply something like look looks like this and uh, it have a slit at the middle and we have analyzer which is just look like same uh, instead of putting it in the in this orientation we are putting it just uh, 90 degree orientation with this okay, let me erase all this so it, it will create confusion okay here we have so if we talk about a polarizer in this case what we can see a polarizer is placed here this is this sorry uh, okay now this is the slit you can see this is the slit through this slit, uh, this uh, ray uh, passes through, and one only one type of uh, vibration, which is now we can find in this direction, and this this direction we can find to passes through it, and it goes through. You have the specimen uh, in the slide. So if you look at the specimen here, when there is no specimen, now first let's talk about if there is no specimen. Second, we'll talk about if there is specimen. So if there is no specimen, without any specimen, what will happen? This light will pass through, and without this birefringent specimen, this light cannot be divided into these two different rays, uh, as we know, because this is the way, this is the only uh, effect of the birefringent sample. Uh, the presence of birefringent sample only creates these two type of rays. One is uh, one with 90 degree with another. So we do not have any birefringence uh, generated if there is no sample. So the ray which comes through will go just uh, it is vibrating in the previous time. So it will pass through it and it will pass through the objective lens and finally when it passes through the analyzer. Now this is a very interesting point I may I make in this case of analyzer and polarizer arrangement. So suppose this is uh, the polarizer and this is the analyzer and polarizer have a slit like this so when it passes through only oscillation of uh, like this will pa will come and when it comes when it encounters it encounters a polarizer which is having a slit like this so it's a it's a horizontal slit like this and the previous one was the perpendicular so only perpendicular vibrations are selected but now they do not find any perpendicular slit to go so there are only horizontal slit so all these vibrations will be cut out so no light beam no light beam will pass us through the analyzer if there is no sample no sample there is only a slide no sample is there that means all these rays which are coming through will cut out via the analyzer so this is the analyzer this is the polarizer so very important point let very very important point and you focus on it so light is coming and when light is coming from all these different direction different vibrations it will all the vibrations will cut out only one type of vibration is selected depending upon the presence of slit and the slit is presenting in the perpendicular orientation so only this perpendicular uh, oscillation is selected but when it is coming through it analyzer is placed in the 90 degree angle with the polarizer in such a way that the slit of analyzer is 90 degree uh, with this uh, polarizer that means all this la lateral uh, waves are cut out uh, via this analyzer so no light beam will come into our eye
okay so we see total black dark background nothing we can see in the slide when there is no specimen now let us consider if there is a specimen there is an optical birefringent specimen a crystal of sodium chloride for instance if we look at this then what happens when when the same procedure it uh, again we have uh, passes through the, this light will pass through this polarizer only one type of oscillation is selected but when this uh, type of vibration is passed will pass through this uh, mm, birefringent sample then this birefringent sample will make two different types of rays one with another in 90 degree angle so this wave uh, these two different waves will come and these waves will go through this slit so now the analyzer will cut only one type of wave which is coming la laterally but the wave which is coming horizontally will easily passes through the wave which is coming horizontally will easily passes through this analyzer and we can observe it uh, observe it after see, throughout uh, after this light will pass through the eyepiece lens and we can see it whether we can see it with our bare eye or we can take a picture but now we can see some some light will pass through now I want you to focus on this picture so here is the light which is coming in now if we put the sample the anisotropic crystal here then what happens it changes the direction of this oscillation and two different ways that w that, and, uh, that results in uh, when it passes through the analyzer because the polarizer analyzer are, uh, are put together in 90 degree angle some of the light rays are cut out but most of the light rays can be easily passed through this analyzer because when uh, the uh, when this polarizing light passes through the anisotropic sample this polarizer uh, this anisotropic sample changes the orientation of these electric vectors so that is the important point that's why I emphasized on the birefringence I emphasized on the anisotropic sample because it is the uh, it is the property of the sample that will change the light so if we change if we uh, put different types of sample in in here that will change the electric vectors direction in different orientation that will create different types of a uh, picture in our eye so not only by putting different type of sample but uh, putting the sample in different orientation in up or down in, uh, in sideways or back sides we can have different types of uh, different types of uh, image different color of image the very interesting thing about this polarizing microscopy when you look at the picture it is really really colorful some part is blue then then green then uh, then, then light uh, yellow then we can find this is the example of one of these pictures I just like these pictures very much because you can find all the different varieties of color not only we have the same type of uh, so it's not it doesn't mean that if we put always this sample we will see something like that if we put the sample if we orient this the part of the sample in different way then you can probably have different types of coloration so that is the part of the polarization microscope it helps us to distinguish the structure of a crystal very very clearly to look at the structure of a crystal very very clearly but again we can look at the structure of a crystal which is really really uh, big because in, in case of the crystal which is very very small or a miniature detail of the crystal cannot be visualized by this polarizing microscopy we need uh, in those cases we need extra diffraction and all these patterns of uh, techniques to learn the ex exact structure of the molecule or the molecular level structure of those crystals but uh, via looking at the polarizing uh, microscope we can tell at least what are the structure of the crystals okay so that is uh, the basic part so again uh, um, the, the only difference uh, of this microscope with the light microscope is placing the sample type and as well as the placing the polarizing light so we're not using huge amount of light we are cutting out all those vectors now another question about this purpose if we're cutting all these vectors then the intensity of light will fall yes the intensity intensity of light will fall and as the intensity of light is fall is falling then we have a darker image so this is a simple uh, tiny light which is coming out and we can see uh, the image in most of the time in dark background or dark conditions but still it will glow the crystals uh, as you can know as they are birefringent sample so double refraction is occurring in this pla place that's why we are looking at those simple those beautiful uh, crystally nature crystally appearance of um, of color or transparency of color okay so that's why it's really really 
cool thing to watch okay so this sample uh, what what actually changes uh, the type of uh, type of the picture what you can look uh, uh, via this uh, polarizing microscope it depends on the type of again the type of uh, the object we are looking at is the type of object second thing is the density or thickness of the sample it is also important if you use the same type of sample but having different density di different thickness then it will change so it will depends on density of the sample which is the type of the sample then it depends on the thickness of the sample and it also depends on the orientation of the sample in the specimen slide so it's all those things really really matters in case of polarizing microscopy so you cannot take one thing for granted in polarizing microscopy you have to look uh, at a particular sample in different orientations to uh, draw a particular conclusion about the sample but it will help us to understand the structure the overall structure of the sample we are looking at so that's why polarizing microscopy is important and i hope that's going to help you thank you